The ancient Jews believed the Old Testament was inspired by God, and there was plenty of evidence to help them arrive at this conclusion. In fact, once the Jews knew a particular set of writings was divinely inspired, they made sure these writings were copied accurately throughout the ages. They did this by forming a class of people known as scribes to help them record the scriptures. These men were highly trained and greatly esteemed by the Jewish people. Their training lasted until they were 30 years of age and they could not serve in an official capacity as scribes until they had lived for at least three decades. To be sure that nothing could ever be lost or copied incorrectly, the scribes would work only from master scrolls. Many of them knew vast passages of scripture by heart, but they always made sure that their words were in exact conformance with the master texts. Accuracy was of paramount importance to the ancient Jewish scholars and a discovery in 1947 proved just how accurately the Hebrew Old Testament had been copied throughout the centuries. In 1947, young shepherds who were searching for a stray goat in the Judean desert discovered a cave in the wilderness. They entered the cave and found jars that were filled with ancient scrolls. Upon this discovery, archaeologists went to work excavating the area around that region and in doing so, they found even more ancient manuscripts, which were dated from the 3rd century BC to 1st century AD. These scrolls were ancient indeed, dating from the Second Temple period to the time of Jesus of Nazareth. Most of the scrolls contained copies of the Hebrew Old Testament, and these have come to be known as the Dead Sea Scrolls, sacred documents that had been hidden from human view for nearly 2,000 years, and many remain in excellent condition. When these scrolls were compared to previously discovered Old Testament manuscripts, there were only minimal differences, and these differences did not affect the meaning of the sentence greatly. Today, the Dead Sea Scrolls are housed in the Shrine of the Book in Israel, and it serves to give us confidence in the reliability of the Old Testament. The ancient Jewish scribes believed that their scriptures were the Word of God. But what does this mean to us in the 21st century? And how can we be sure that these scriptures are relevant to us today? Let me answer that question with two words. Bible prophecy. Yes, prophecy. Take a look at the long-term prophecies found in the Old Testament. You will discover that many have actually been confirmed by recorded history and even by the current events being reported by our news media today. The prophet Isaiah wrote, Remember the former things, those of long ago. I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. I say, my purpose will stand, and I will do all that I please. Inspired by God, these verses declare that fulfilled prophecy is absolute proof that God is God, and that he inspired the Old Testament. Why? Because no one, human, or devil can predict the future with absolute precision except Almighty God Himself. Throughout its history, Egypt has played a major role in the Middle East. The period of its greatest power was approximately 1600 years BC when the conquering armies of the pharaoh pressed southward into the Sudan, westward along the North African coast, 
and northward through the land of Israel and on into Syria. Archaeological discoveries of ancient Egyptian temples, monuments, and tombs in these regions reveal the glory of the pharaohs during their most powerful era. From about 1400 BC, however, Egyptian power began to decline. When the Jews occupied the land of Israel from 1400 BC to 600 BC, the Egyptians periodically interfered in the politics of the Middle East with varying degrees of success. And during this time, the Israelites, fearing invasion from the Assyrians or Babylonians, were tempted to seek support from Egypt instead of relying on their faith in God. Unfortunately, the Egyptians did not help Israel. So here is what the word of the Lord said concerning Egypt. All who live in Egypt will know that I am the Lord. You have been a staff of reed for the house of Israel. When they grasped you with their hands, you splintered and you tore open their shoulders. When they leaned on you, you broke and their backs were wrenched. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I will bring a sword against you and kill your men and their animals. Egypt will become a desolate wasteland. At the end of 40 years, I will gather the Egyptians from the nations where they were scattered. I will bring them back from captivity and return them to Upper Egypt, the land of their ancestry. There they will be a lowly kingdom. It will be the lowliest of kingdoms and will never again exalt itself above the other nations. I will make it so weak that it will never again rule over the nations. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I'm going to give Egypt to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he will carry off its wealth. Such a prophecy might have seemed ridiculous to some of the people in Ezekiel's time because Egypt had been a world power for centuries and had dominated many nations, including Israel. Now let's recap the major points found in Ezekiel's prophecy concerning Egypt. First, it will be conquered by Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar will carry off its wealth. Second, this will not, however, be an end to Egypt. Third, the kingdom of Egypt would recover, but its power would be reduced greatly. She would become a lowly kingdom. And fourth, Egypt would be so weak that it will never again rule over the nations. Now, let's see what does secular history say about Egypt. From about 600 BC, Egypt fell under the domination of a succession of conquering invaders. As predicted, the Babylonians took over Egypt in the 6th century BC. Next, they were conquered by the Persians from the 6th to the 4th century BC. The Greeks took their turn in the 4th century, followed by the Romans from the 1st century BC to the 5th century AD. Then. Along came the Arabs and Turks from the 7th century AD onwards. Even the British ruled Egypt for a while. For 2,500 years up to the present day, Egypt has remained as Ezekiel prophesied it would be, a lowly kingdom that is always dominated by others and unable to take control of any other country. Sometime between the years 622 BC to 600 BC, the prophet Ezekiel was inspired by God to give a prophecy regarding the city of Tyre, located in present-day Lebanon. In ancient times, Tyre was a large, prosperous seaport city consisting of two cities, the mainland city and the island city of Tyre. During that time, Tyre was a great enemy of Israel. 
Here's Ezekiel's prophecy concerning Tyre. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I am against you, O Tyre, and I will bring many nations against you like the sea casting up its waves. They will destroy the walls of Tyre and pull down her towers. I will scrape away her rubble and make her a bare rock. Out in the sea she will become a place to spread fish nets, for I have spoken, declares the Sovereign Lord. She will become plunder for the nations. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says. From the north I am going to bring against Tyre Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, king of kings, with horses and chariots, with horsemen and a great army. He will ravage your settlements on the mainland with the sword. They will plunder your wealth and loot your merchandise. They will bring down your walls and demolish your fine houses and throw your stones, timber, and rubble into the sea. I will make you a bare rock, and you will become a place to spread fishnets. You will never be rebuilt for I, the Lord, have spoken. Ezekiel gave this prophecy about 2,600 years ago. Let's take a moment to review the points of this prophecy against Tyre. First, Nebuchadnezzar will ravage your settlements on the mainland. Second, enemies will throw your stones, timber, and rubble into the sea. Third, Tyre will become a bare rock, so flat the fishermen will be able to spread their nets on the site of this former metropolis. Fourth, many nations will rise up against Tyre. And fifth, Tyre will never be rebuilt. Now, let's see what secular history says about Tyre. In the year 586 BC, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, began to attack the mainland city of Tyre. His army was the greatest fighting force ever known, and it laid siege to the city of Tyre for 13 years. When they finally broke through the gates and tore down the walls of the city, they found that the people had relocated to an island which was half a mile off the coast of Tyre. This fulfills the first point of Ezekiel's prophecy, for the mainland city was destroyed by the king of Babylon. However, the island city of Tyre was left alone and remained a powerful city for several hundred years. Then, in 332 BC, Alexander the Great attacked the island city of Tyre because it would not submit to his authority. Because Alexander had no fleet of ships, he demolished the mainland city of Tyre by throwing the stones, timber, and dirt into the sea, creating a causeway. This causeway or bridge would connect the mainland to the island city of Tyre, and when this causeway was completed, Alexander conquered this island city, after which 30,000 of its inhabitants were sold into slavery. In his history textbook, Philip Meyer states, Alexander the Great reduced Tyre to ruins in 332 BC. Tyre recovered in a measure from his blow, but never regained the place that she had previously held in the world. The larger part of the site of the once great city is now as bare as the top of a rock a place where the fishermen that still frequent the spot spread their nets to dry. 